In our study of Pirkei Avot, we're now up to chapter 1, Mishnah 8. And you'll find the text on the download link on the YouTube page, but in the green siddur on page 526. And as ever, we'll read the Mishnah in Hebrew, along with the translation of Rabbi Sachs, Allah HaShalom. Mishnah 8 says as follows, Yehuda ben Tabai v'Shimon ben Shatach kibalu mehem. The Yehuda ben Tabai and Shimon ben Shatach received their tradition from the teachers before them, who we've looked at in, pre- in previous videos. That was, of course, Yehoshua ben Parachia and Nittai Arbeli. And in this Mishnah, we'll look at the teachings of Yehuda ben Tabai. Yehuda ben Tabai Omer, Yehuda ben Tabai says, Altatz atzmecha ko'orachei hadinim. And the translation of this phrase is in brackets, in Rabbi Sachs' translation. When sitting as a judge, in brackets, close bracket at that point, do not act as an advocate. And when the parties to a dispute or a lawsuit appear before you, regard them both as guilty. But when they leave you, regard them both as innocent. Having accepted the verdict. Who were Shimon ben Shatach and Yehuda ben Tabai? Well, I think will help us understand the particular teaching of this Mishnah. Well, let's focus on Yehuda ben Tabai. Both of these sages lived uh, in the first part, perhaps at the beginning, maybe a little bit later on, of the final century BCE, before the Common Era. That's what Jews uh, refer to uh, as. Uh, instead of CE. And it was a turbulent time. Uh, there were Hasmonean kings such as Yanai, uh, who was not well disposed towards the sages, and Shlom Sion Hamalka. And these two sages, Shimon ben Shatach and Yehuda ben Tabai, perhaps between themselves as the, the third of the pairs of sages that we have studied, uh, at different times having the role of head of the court or being the Nasi, the religious leader of the people. A little bit analogous, perhaps in our days, to being the Rosh Beit Din or the Ab Beit Din, the head of the Beit Din, or being the chief rabbi, had to try and steer a path that would protect the Pharisees and the sages, particularly at times of lawlessness, which sadly there were in their day. So perhaps that's why Yehuda ben Tabai says, "Do not make yourself as one of the Orechei Hadinim." Now, in modern Hebrew, an Orech Din, of course, is a lawyer, but in this Mishnah. As was clear from Rabbi Sachs's translation and from our commentaries, this Mishnah is being addressed to judges. It's not being addressed to lawyers. So therefore, read this way, do not make yourself as someone who is trying to perhaps in some way arrange a verdict when the litigants come before you. You can't have a preconceived idea of what the verdict will be. You can't take any sides. That's why you can't arrange matters. You have to uh, follow the due process correctly. And therefore, as well, say the commentaries, when the litigants stand before you, initially see them as guilty. Because if you see them as guilty and you're a judge, you will question them properly. You will get to the bottom of the matter. You will do what you need to do and you'll do due diligence correctly. That's what you will do. But once they have left you, if they have shown that they have accepted the judgment, then you have to look at them as being people who are zakain, who are innocent, in this case, they are worthy as well because they have accepted the judgment. The great uh, merits of having accepted a judgment, as difficult as that can be, especially if it's not the judgment which a litigant wants to hear. So therefore, in this Mishnah, Yudam and Tabai is arguing very much and teaching us about the rule of law. And he says that um, uh, you should also, if you're a judge, make sure that the verdict is clear, said the commentaries, and understood to try and remove any uncertainty whatsoever and avoid any follow-up which might bring the judgment into question or even cause any more disputes. So this is a fascinating Mishnah showing how the sages, again, the uh, the, the very important drivers amongst the Prashim, the Pharisees, who were prevailing by the end of their period, how the sages wanted to show an, a, uh, an intrinsic and a, a true application of Jewish law as essential to the running of a good society, and building up what we learned in the previous Mishnah, making sure, as Nittai Harabeli warned us, that nobody was going to join themselves to a bad person, and also to make sure that people were staying away from bad influences.
So this is the Mishnah of Yudam ben Tabai. The next Mishnah will teach us what his co-rabbi at the time, Shimon ben Shetach, uh, did in that period as well.